Um, nimefurahi sana kufika hapa siku ya leo na kumbuka um, tarehe 15 Disemba 2014 nilikuja hapa kwa mara ya kwanza kuanzisha rasmi ujenzi wa kwanza hapa hatukukuwa na chochote hakukuwa na barabara hizi manyumba zote hazikukweko and i am a very proud kenyan to see what konza is and what Ken, uh, konza will be nataka niseme pongezi kwa wale wote ambao wamehusika na kufikisha konza mahali imefika naambiwa ya kwamba kuna wananchi wengi wamechangia hasa wale walio mbali wale wamevaa kofia ya construction wale ndio wamewezesha kazi hii yote ifike mahali imefika nataka niseme pongezi congratulations to um, the konza community uh, the local community here and uh, those who have made us come this far i remember very well that uh, we had to put together a consortium of friends and and uh, development partners and i want to appreciate the government of korea the government of italy the government of china because they have provided working with the government of kenya a lot of support and the government of kenya has to date i think we have put close to 100 billion already in this facility the power <clears throat> generation facility alone is like 7.9 billion shillings together with all the other pieces of infrastructure that have gone on here the government of kenya has deployed huge resources because Konsa Technopolis is a national piece of infrastructure and is a global outfit. This outfit here is going to serve the people of Kenya. In fact, we've just negotiated a big facility that is going to bring the entire infrastructure, digital infrastructure, technology infrastructure of Kenya into this facility. So I want to ask all of us who are here and to persuade all of us to share this facility. Tumeweka pesa ya wa Kenya wote hapa. So hii hii facility najua mara mnasema Machakos sijui Makueni sijui Kajiado. Hii ni yetu sisi zote my friends. <laughs> eh hii imejengwa na pesa ya wakenya wote ile eh, pesa tumeweka hapa sisi wote tunagaramia kama wakenya na i want us to see this facility for what it is this is a global piece of infrastructure wakenya kutoka sehemu zote watasoma katika chuo ambaye tunaanzisha leo ile kazi itaendelea hapa itawafaidi wa Kenya wote na mimi nataka nishukuru counties ambazo ni majirani hapa kwa kufanya kazi pamoja na sisi i want to assure you that we are going to work together all of us let me also take this opportunity to congratulate the technical team led by professor maritim Ebu msimame jameni tuwapigie makofi. Tuwapigie makofi hao wangwana. The technical team have done a phenomenal job. Pongezi sana. Thank you very much. You can take your seats. Uh, for those of you who may not know when I began this process when I was minister for higher education I wanted to complete it within a year. but i couldn't because of the circumstances then i am very proud that we made this part of the kenya kwanza commitment to the people of kenya in fact if you read the kenya kwanza manifesto i undertook that within the first 100 days i'm going to set up a committee that will look into bringing about 
the Open University of Kenya, and I did it. And I am very proud that within a year, this university has opened its gates. And by September, we will have students in the Open University of Kenya. It is a very proud moment for me to see this coming to fruition. Let me say a third thing to thank my friend James Mwangi. I know I didn't give you options of saying no. And uh, it is because I have seen your passion in education. The Wings to Fly program has given thousands of young Kenyans an opportunity to acquire education. Your performance at the Mary University is something that we are very proud of. And I am confident that we will be more proud with your stewardship as Chancellor of the Open University of Kenya. I was very specific when I told uh, uh, C.S. Machogu on who the chancellor should be. And it is because um, this is a very important institution. This is a bottom-up institution. This institution is going to give opportunity, access to very ordinary people. The people who ordinarily would not afford now have an opportunity to acquire university education from very remote places. An undeniable truth that may be said about the people of Kenya without any fear of contradiction is this, that regardless of the regional and socioeconomic distinctions that are used to describe us, we all want the same thing for ourselves, our families, and our nation. And we fiercely believe that we deserve equal access to the means and opportunities to actualize these aspirations. The rigorous nationwide journey of, the, of public convers, uh, consultations that we undertook, which set out the government's bottom-up economic transformation agenda speaks to this truth. This certainty persuaded us to incorporate into the agenda three critical and complementary principles. First, it was a priority for government to develop and strengthen political institutions and cultures which facilitate effective and inclusive national discourse that enable Kenya to define and articulate their aspirations in terms of what we believe in that should be public policy. Secondly, we prioritize the enhanced support for governance and administrative mechanisms that protect rights, guarantee liberty, safeguard dignity, and advance well-being at all times. Finally, we identified the urgent imperative for a development agenda which transforms every Kenyan's fundamental interest from that of expecting and demanding a share of the national development cake to one whereby all Kenyans are rallied to join the common enterprise of making a much bigger and richer national cake and are guaranteed to partake equitably. What I'm trying to say is the following. We've always had a conversation as a country about sharing, sharing positions, sharing this, sharing resources. But fundamentally, the conversation that we are now having, the policy interventions that we have recommended in our policy framework, including in our budget, is how not so much sharing what we have, but on how 
making sure that we bake a bigger cake. Yeah? And it begins with how we empower everybody to be able to participate in the baking of that bigger cake. And it starts with us arming everybody with the right education, giving everybody a chance at acquiring knowledge, and being empowered to be able to make meaningful contribution. And that is the reason this year had the largest budget in education in Kenya's history. These members of parliament may not know, but it was deliberate that we are going to invest more than 650 billion Kenya shillings from this year going forward in making sure that we equip every Kenyan with knowledge, with expertise, with skills, with competencies, so that each and every one on our, of, of us can make a contribution to the Kenya that we all want. And the Open University of Kenya is one such that is going to expand access and is going to make education at the higher level affordable. This morning I was having a conversation and I was asking because it was something that I really wanted to know. And the vice chancellor told me it's going to cost half what it would cost ordinarily in uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a normal university. But we have agreed with James, with James that we don't want it to cost half. We want it to cost a quarter. And uh, James has already told me how we are going to do it. You know, so I, I made the right choice of a, vice, of, of, of a chancellor. <laughs> uh, he has already given me ideas on how we are going to make this affordable. And in fact, he has, he has even better ideas than I, 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 I had. So I, I am in the right place. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda is concerned with the connection between productivity of labor and economic transformation is easily understood in terms of job creation, higher incomes, savings, investments, as drivers of rapid economic growth. For people to earn high or rising incomes, they need to possess productive capacity in terms of knowledge, skills, motivation, and capacity to perform tasks which create high value. It is clear that creating a robust institutional framework to impart necessary knowledge and skills to young people is a fundamental mandate implicit in the job creation dimension of our agenda. To accomplish this, we recognize that nothing short of radical disruption would align our national education system with this plan. For decades, our education system consistently fell short of its ideal standard as society's ultimate means of building an equitable society by giving every child, irrespective of background, the chance to fulfill their potential, chase their dream, and rise to the highest possible level of achievement. For this reason, we run the risk of becoming a rigidly entrenched class society divided by inequality and unable to pursue a common vision or articulate any collective aspiration as one nation. Even after implementing free primary education and beginning to undertake free day secondary education, we hesitated when it came to the most critical intervention for developing employable skills in tertiary and higher education. Over the years, millions of Kenyans were left at home after failing to secure admission to tertiary, uh, to tertiary in education institutions. As time went by, graduates of these institutions started having difficulties finding employment, and employers began complaining 
that our graduates lacked skills relevant for modern competitive industries. As entry examinations became viciously competitive on one end, and employers were spending billions of shillings retraining graduates to make them suitable for their enterprise needs. In the middle, millions of youths were left with no choice except to flock to informal sector and unskilled work. Our entire university capacity in 41 public and 37 private universities admits 650,000 students in total and remains unable to keep up with a growing demand. Every year, therefore, many eligible and interested young people are unable to enroll for university education and the Open University of Kenya gives them a chance to. In the plan, we identified the setting up of a national university, as I said, as a critical intervention to address this crisis. The objective was to increase access while reducing the cost of university education in order to finally deliver 100% transition to higher education, whether it is transition to our TVETs, whether it's transition to our VCTs, whether it is our transition to our universities. That transition must happen so that we can continuously sharpen our human capital and use it to drive the prosperity of our country. As I have told you, I did undertake and I am very proud of the team led by Professor Munavu, my uh, former teacher. That great professor is a wonderful, uh, good man. He participated uh, in the education chapter in the formulating the education chapter of our Kenya Kwanzaa plan and many other aspects of that. And I'm very happy that he is also, also participating in its implementation. Asante Sana Professor. Um, early findings from the recommendation that Professor Munavu and team and uh, Professor Maritim and team recommended on working group enabled us to consolidate the institutional framework for the National Open University and finalize the groundwork for its inauguration by developing, validating, and uploading courses and training material online. On Madaraka Day, as you all remember, I announced to the nation that the National Open University would shortly obtain its charter. That was a few months ago. Today, I am very proud that we've given Kenya, uh, Open University of Kenya, a university charter. The magnitude of this achievement to me is big. For long, the term inclusive was assumed to be naturally incompatible with the purposes of higher education. While university education was commonly understood to be by definition the exclusive privilege of a few. And I say this as a public servant, knowing very well where we come from. When I look, for example, and that is what motivated me to rethink the higher education funding model. Because, good people, out of our 11,000, is it, or 12,000 uh, secondary schools, uh, Belio? 11,000. 11,000 um, secondary schools in Kenya. 5,000. 5,000 secondary schools do not send even one student to university. Whole 5,000, most of them in rural Kenya. That is a cause for us to do some soul searching. Many of the students who end up at our universities are the children in academies, and the children of people who can afford a certain quality of education. Kenya cannot continue that way. We have to rethink it. Yes. And that is why in the new funding model at the university, 
we made the deliberate decision that students from vulnerable families must get 100% scholarship. At least to make sure that those who manage to go that far never drop out because they were not able to pay for this or the other. But we're going to work backwards. And I've already told uh, Wazir Machogu to think. It cannot continue like that. We cannot continue to have the children of a few Kenyans going up the education ladder. We must make sure that the children of all Kenyans have equal opportunity to be their best. Today, Kenya makes history by flinching open the door of the university for everyone who wishes to receive higher education. From the convenience of their home, office, kiosk, farm, or other households. Those who do not wish or cannot afford to abandon their other interests in order to pursue university education can now enroll on more convenient terms. This is, in my very honest opinion, the university possibly of herdsmen, farmers. Mamamboga in his place can also attend now university. Matatu drivers, border border people, when you are waiting for your passengers, you can attend courses at the university. Watchmen, domestic employees, as well as trained professionals and graduates. Nothing says bottom up better than an open University of Kenya that gives everybody a chance. It is indeed, it is indeed, in again my very honest submission, the People's University. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you can be in class in a university by simply logging in. I note with great satisfaction that the simultaneous implement implementation of our open university and the digital superhighway commitment demonstrate the internal coherence of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda and highlights the strategic complementarities between its pillars. You know, when, when we were discussing about how we are going to roll out 100 kilometers of fiber optic, many people were wondering why. It's about delivery of many things. E-commerce, delivery of digital jobs, delivery of university education alongside all the other education um, requirements. We believe that intensifying connectivity in transport and communication infrastructure is essential for higher productivity and more vigorous economic activity throughout Kenya. This applies to traditional economic activity as well as the digital economy. As we continue to enrich our roads, rail, pipeline, port infrastructure, we are equally highly focused on laying down the infrastructural backbone of a robust digital economy. We are therefore collaborating with the private sector and other partners to build 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable network to connect every part of Kenya to high bandwidth digital networks. To complement this, we are also establishing fully-fledged digital hubs in every constituency and 22,000 Wi-Fi hotspots at every market center in Kenya. And again, I have told uh, my good friend, Governor Mutula Jr., my lawyer, uh, that uh, we intend to expand this to all the vocational training centers that are manned by county governments because we want to expand opportunity for access, both for purposes of training, for purposes of e-commerce, and also for purposes of ensuring that our digital jobs footprint in Kenya is as widely spread as possible. 
What this means is that the people of Kenya will be able to take advantage of nationwide internet accessibility to surmount the barriers of distance and cost to access quality education in their millions. We cannot therefore afford to be lax about quality in administering the curriculum of the Open University of Kenya. The university is our opportunity to provide quality, affordable education equitably and inclusively. While also taking advantage or while also taking deliberate care to develop a critical mass of digital and technological skills that will endow enterprises in all sectors with a suitable capacity to be innovative and also to be competitive. And I say this because it is important. And maybe I will uh, request uh, the university to consider among us the courses that uh, the, the, the university should consider is a course in uh, uh, making Kenya multilingual. I think it is easy for us to learn French, Chinese, Arabic, and, and, and every other language online. So it is, the, it is our intention as a government to expand opportunities for the people of Kenya because we have the best human resource anywhere in the world. And to be able to deploy this best human resource, we need to access every market. And for us to access every market, we must be multilingual so that Kenyans can speak different languages. I would, uh, maybe it is, it is good to, be, to learn your mother tongue, but uh, it takes you only so far around the village. But, <laughs> so I, I think, add, added on to your mother tongue, I think, uh, and all the other languages, Kiswahili and English, I think all of us should aspire to at least have another two languages. And I hope the university, uh, Open University of Kenya can give us that opportunity. When you open that window, please let me know because I want to enroll. <laughs> I am delighted to announce that the inaugural installment of courses to be offered by the university are highly aligned to our transformational agenda. Through the courses, we will acquire a formidable national stock of digital skills for our market and beyond. They include as they are listed there, Bachelor of Cyber Security and Digital Forensics, which going by recent events in our digital domain must be in very high demand in our market. Others are Bachelor of Data Science, Bachelor of Technology Education, Bachelor of Science in Business and Entrepreneurship and Statistics, and Bachelor of Science in Agriculture and Food Systems, again, because we need to deal with the cost of living. I am very happy that you people are thinking about it. The university also offers pro, will offer postgraduate diplomas in leadership and accountability as well as learning design and technology. I have been assured that in coming years, masters and doctorate programs will be introduced, making lifelong learning not only possible, but also accessible and affordable. The adoption of best practice, technologies, and teaching tools at the Open University of Kenya will guarantee effective curriculum implementation, quality education and training, and also set the pace for higher education in Kenya to transform teaching and also transform learning. I am encouraged to note that the university will implement a framework for recognizing prior learning in order to smoothen the pathways of progression for students. To enhance choice and increase our public university capacity, the Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement uh, Service should incorporate the Open University of Kenya into its portal in time to enroll students for the academic year commencing September this year. It goes without saying that the students placed through uh, what's commonly known as COOPs will benefit from government financial support 
through the new funding model according to the combination of loans and scholarships as evaluated by the means testing instrument. And I have seen the CEO of uh, Higher Education Loans Board here. I am sure you have come to make sure that uh, this facility is good enough to benefit from the resources that you disperse. <laughs> I take this opportunity to commend the Cabinet Secretary for Education and various teams who supported him in delivering this magnificent achievement. You have accomplished, Minister, a historic project that I started many years ago. Uh, be very proud that you brought this home. Um, and one that ensures higher education systems leave no, no one behind. The Open University of Kenya is a major milestone in the implementation of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. And I thank all of you, those who made every contribution to get us here for a job well done, Asante Nisana. I encourage all Kenyans interested in pursuing university education flexibly, conveniently, and affordably to make sure that they are in class come September this year. Aside from the university, the CONSA ecosystem is benefiting from a greening initiative spearheaded by the Ministry of Environment, Climate Change, and Forestry through its lead agency, Kenya Forest Service and Kenya Forestry Research. As I told the CEO a few months ago when they came to see me, uh, you need to do something about greening this place when a CEO. You know? I know you are acting CEO. Maybe if you did a good job with the greening, <laughs> who knows? <Huh? laughs> so you, whatever you, uh, how you use that information is up to you. <laughs> Working with the Konza Technopolis Development Authority on the Greening Initiative, the agencies are among other technical services providing appropriate tree seed varieties best suited for the Asal region as part of the 15 billion national tree growing and ecosystem restoration program that seeks to raise Kenya's tree cover to 30% by 2032. The initiative will see authorities set up a 10 million capacity tree nursery to enable, its, uh, to enable it grow 1 million trees within the, techno uh, the Technopolis by 2025, making it a model site in restoration of Asal landscape. And I have said that KFS, in collaboration with Konza, should make seedlings available to the communities around here the county government of uh, Makueni, the county government of uh, Machakos, the county government of Kajiado should be able to benefit from the tree seedlings here. And uh, I look forward to a report that says we, have, we are making progress. Let me also uh, say so far, the authority has been able to grow 30,000 trees and 200,000 shrubs and ground cover within phase one of the techno, uh, Technopolis and donated 100,000 seedlings to communities, public institutions, and conservation organizations for planting within the Technopolis 10 kilometers buffer zone in the last one year. Through KEFRI and uh, CONSA, CONSA will set up an ultra-modern research and development facility that will become a center of excellence in restoration of degraded ASAL landscape by offering training, site-specific matching, and accompanying technical service to communities and institutions working in these fragile ecosystems in our ASALs. Alongside Greening CONSA Initiative, the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA, is assisting CONSA in sustainable waste management, including setting up one of Kenya's most foremost public e-waste recycling facility on a two-acre piece of land here. The pilot phase of the project, which is at the core of Kenya's circular economy blueprint, is supported by the World Bank's Global Environment Facility. Many other things I do not want 
to mention today because this is not the occasion for it. Uh, just to make an uh, announcement that uh, it is my commitment and that of the Kenya government that this facility will go into phase two immediately. <laughs> Let me also say that we have secured another 100 billion for this facility in the next five years. So we have resources to develop this concert facility. Some people have been asking, what have I been doing? When I have gone to this country, I saw the media try and say, this man has traveled here and here and here. Among us, the things that we have managed achieved, I traveled to Korea, I traveled to Germany, I have traveled to uh, another three countries on this very subject. I am very proud to announce to you that we now have 100 billion shillings for Consa Technopolis to develop phase two. And among the things we want to develop here is uh, the road. We want to expand the road from Machakos Tanov that we dueled uh, now all the way to Emali. So uh, we are going to dual that road to eliminate the accidents and to make sure that uh, this facility becomes much more accessible. Another component of what we are going to do with that facility is um, to make sure that we deliver water to this facility. I have heard the discussion, the suggestions that have been made by the leadership of this area in matters water. I want to assure you that we now have a facility that will deliver water directly to this uh, consa from, uh, from Kilimanjaro to this place, and we have the resources to do it. And also to mention that we are also going to rehabilitate the pipeline that already exists. I know uh, there's been a bit of pull and push between Kajiado and, uh, and Makweni. I want to assure you that we are going to develop these two pipelines so that there is no quarrel between the counties. Let me also say we are going to have a huge infrastructure here to support our technology. Because we have made a conscious decision as a country that we are moving into the digital space, there are accompanying risks. But I want to assure you that we have the resources now to build the necessary infrastructure to support Kenya going the technology trajectory. And we will all move in that, uh, in that direction. We have other pieces of infrastructure that uh, will be put up. There is a comprehensive uh, program on how this is going to be delivered. I just want to give assurance to all of us that this silicon savanna is going to be something. And it's going to be something we will all be proud of. It is my expectation that we are going to profile this uh, facility as a global facility. And the global facility because many of you may be thinking this is in Malili, this is in this place, but you know it is in Kenya. And Kenya is the home of humanity. Uh, Penina Malonza here is running a big program to make Kenya what it should be. We, we are looking at the possibility of eliminating any visa requirement for anybody who wants to come to Kenya because science tells us that the earliest remains of man are in Kenya, meaning humanity be started from here. And therefore, the people in Europe and America and all those other places, they came from here. And it is, not, it is not fair to ask anybody for a visa when they are going home. <laughs> yeah, it's not fair. So we are seriously, and I'm, I have assigned the Prime Cabinet Secretary here with a ministerial team to work on that concept because we could possibly drive our tourist numbers from our two million to maybe 20 million by just telling everybody, please come home. Yeah, so, Sasa, Nini Munazema, Munataka Gutusumbua, Pathis, Jui Machakos, Jui Wapi, Sis Nataka Kulete Wale Wengi, Wako Uko, Wakuja Kenya. 
So I, 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 am, I am really happy that uh, we can do this together and work as a team. Tuta, tuta shirikiana pamoja. So uh, the other issues that have been raised by leaders here, we're going to make sure that uh, we work together collaboratively, uh, making sure that we are participating. Let me, let me tell you, good people. Uh, as I said earlier, we, we, we've always been thinking and our political conversation has always been, oh, you know, uh, uh, we are sharing, we didn't get enough. cake for the people of Kenya. And that is why we are investing in education so that we can equip everybody, give everybody a chance to acquire knowledge, to acquire skills, so that they can help us build this big cake. We are having policy interventions. Why are we discussing about creating jobs? We are creating jobs because we want to give everybody a chance to make a contribution to the prosperity of Kenya. There are so many people who want to make a contribution, but they are limited by opportunity. That's why we are deliberate about creating a million jobs using housing, creating a million jobs using digital space, creating additional jobs by exporting labor, you know, giving ourselves an opportunity, as many of us as possible, we must get an opportunity to contribute towards baking that bigger cake for Kenya. We are making policy interventions. For example, in the budget, we are saying, why should we import the things that we can produce in Kenya using our own resources, using our own energy, our own talent, our own expertise, our own skills, so that again, we can give everybody a chance to make a contribution. That's why we are saying cement, for example, we are going to be producing it in Kenya. Let's expand the cement producing capacity in Kenya, give many people an opportunity to work in those industries, use local resources, whether it is lime, whether it is sand, let's use local resources. Let us not import furniture that we can produce locally. It is an opportunity to give more Kenyans an opportunity to contribute in baking a bigger cake. Let us not Im import fish for goodness sake. We have many young people that can go to Lake Victoria, that can go to uh, the Indian Ocean and uh, collect um, resources from our blue economy resources. God did not give us an ocean for us, for it to be uh, for cinema. It, it, God gave us the ocean so that we can tap into the resources therein to grow ourselves, to grow food. Why are we empowering our farmers? We are empowering our, our farmers so that they can bake a bigger cake, grow more food. And I am very happy. Farmers are the most, as I said yesterday, they are the most patriotic human beings I have ever come across. Even when they don't make so much, they still go back to the farm. And they need our support. And I am very proud that we are going to work together. I want to persuade my good brother Mutula and your team please assist us to get the fertilizer to the farthest corner. You know, tafadhali, mutusaidie. What I have said is we can build a, co a, a collabo, you know. We will bring the fertilizer to Makueni, uh, the few spots that we can. You can establish some stores in different areas. We will give you the human uh, beings, the human capital, and the uh, labor to, uh, to, to run those stores so that we can grow food locally. We have a whole program which we are discussing with the counties to make sure that we can harvest water. I know, for example, in this region, water is a very important component. We can unlock the huge potential in the soils we have in this region by delivering water. It is the reason why 
uh, we are going to complete Thwake by February next year. I have given very firm instructions. We cannot build Thwake forever. It must come to an end. And we are going, I, I will come to uh, uh, Thwake in February. I have told everybody that I will be there. I have given a date, so they have to work backwards, you know, and deliver it. Because we, we, it's been, we've been here for, for a long time. There are other uh, dams that we have discussed. You've seen the ones that we have advertised. We're going to advertise another lot. We're going to work with the counties to do more water pans, micro dams, to make sure that we harvest as much water as we can so that we can empower our farmers to be able to produce more food for us, bake a bigger cake for us, so that we are not complaining about lack of this and lack of the other. So I want us to mobilize ourselves, focus our energy. Good people, we have a great country. Let us not let ourselves down by doing the wrong things. Let us mobilize every energy, every resource, every talent, every knowledge to drive our country's prosperity. And we can do it working together. So na wauliza tapadhali tuungane tuko na mpango mzuri eh, hawa ndugu zangu eh, wa counties niliwaambia hatutaenda barabara ya madeni we cannot be a country that is borrowing left right center up down front back no because we run the real risk of going downhill and i am very proud that the people of kenya have told me with clarity that they are willing to make their contribution in making sure that we have the resources, but they have cautioned me that those resources should not be stolen by anybody. And I will make sure they are not stolen by anybody. Yeah? So, ile, ile panga nilipatiwa pale ni ya kuchunga mali ya wa Kenya. Muti yote atakuja hapo na wizi atakipata. And I have given very firm instructions. There is no two ways about it. The one other thing that we must all agree is that we will compete. We are a very competitive country. We are a country that is, has a lot of talent, very, uh, a big pool of ideas and knowledge. We will compete our ideas. We will compete with our ideas. We will compete with our knowledge. We will compete with our positions, but we will never compete in violence. Please, that one, I have said, it will never happen again in Kenya. Mambo ya vita na kupiganisha watu. Habana, hawezi kuendelea tena kwa hii Kenya. Iyo tutu kubaliane. And whatever it takes, we will mobilize whatever resource to make sure that we secure the lives of Kenyans, their property, their uh, businesses, and make sure that Kenya is firmly on the foundation of a peaceful nation. Because violence undermines our democracy. Violence undermines our development. Violence undermines our prosperity and our standing as a nation in the community of, of nations. So we cannot allow it. <laughs> Uh, I have also made sure that uh, we support our members of parliament. I made sure that all the monies for CDF, for our members of parliament, for, uh, in fact, for the women, I committed to them that I will add them a billion shillings for NGAF, which I did. Uh, we will support the Senate to do its work. Um, as was said here, uh, the last financial year uh, in 2022, the government then crossed over with about 30 billion shillings belonging to counties. This year, I made sure that we paid to the last cent before we crossed the year. I have also made sure that the money due to counties for July was paid in July for the first time in 10 years. And I will continue to support all other institutions to make sure that we deliver for the people of Kenya.
tukiwapatia pesa ya county musiende kuchukua na kupanga maandamano ya vita please that is not right that is not why counties were made sio kama tunaelewana my friends mnataka atichukue ushuru ya Kenya taxpayers money twende tununue mawe ya kupiganisha wa Kenya hapana 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 hiyo no so tafadhali mimi nawauliza kwa kwa heshima kubwa viongozi wenzangu mimi nawaheshimu sana nataka tuheshimiane twizi wote ni wafanyikazi wa hawa wananchi wa Kenya jameni so kila mtu tusichanganyikiwe tu unajua za zingine majina hii title mingi excellency this mheshimiwa that nini nini mpaka tunaona we are special we are not we are just as ordinary as every kenyan and we are servants of these great people they pay our salaries they pay our they put fuel in our cars let us work for them because they deserve it aman magani ndugu zangu mkubaliana so tushirikiana namna hiyo na nitarudi hapa kwanza tena mmesikia tuko na tumepanga kama serikali na tumetafuta marafiki tumepanga vile tutaendesha sehemu hii na facility hii itakuwa ni facility ya muhimu sana katika eh, maendeleo ya taifa letu la Kenya mimi nimefurahi sana kwamba Open University iko tayari na nimeuliza kwa heshima eh, bwana vice chancellor tutafutie course ya kusoma French kuna wengine wanataka kusoma Chinese kuna wengine wanataka kusoma Italia kuna wengine wanataka kusoma Spanish kuna wengine wanataka kusoma Arabic hii kwa mtandao tunaweza kusoma hiyo haihitaji laboratory haihitaji nini haihitaji nje hakuna mahali ya kukaza nat so tunaweza kusoma hiyo kwa kwa mtandao ama namna gani so na ile kozi zingine zote ambazo eh, tumekubaliana na tumekubaliana eh, masomo itakuwa katika malipo ya chini ndio wale mahasla wangu wengi wapate nafasi ya kusoma nataka kila mtu apate nafasi ya, ku, ya, kuso, ya kusukuma masomo so asanteni sana na watakia baraka ya Mungu congratulations to Open University of Kenya Ntaomba mheshimiwa rais kwa ruhusa asalie kwenye jukua kwa kipindi kifupi tu cha picha ntaomba tuketi tafadhali ni mwalike mkuu wa mawaziri kwa jukua na waziri wetu wa elimu wale wengine tuketi tafadhali alafu niombe the open university officials tafadhali twende kwenye jukua the open university of kenya let us frank his excellency the president for a photo twende kwa jukua tafadhali let's go to the watafuatwa na commission of university education wawe tayari the officials okay the open university can leave the stage uh, officials from uh, commission on university education prime cabinet and the cs education to remain constant to with his excellency officials from uh, commission of university education let us balance kindly from uh, the, the second to last then the third one will be the technical working committee also to be on standby